Before we begin, thank you very much to Marcus for joining the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. Remember, I don't ask anyone to spend a lot on the Patreon campaign. I ask you to spend a little bit. And you don't think a little bit is going to help, but if a lot of people thought a little bit was going to help, it would help a lot. And it would keep me doing this for as long as I possibly could. So you guys are legitimately the reason why I'm able to keep doing this. So thank you very much for your support over on Patreon. I don't normally do holiday-centric videos around this time. I like to make celebratory things everyone can enjoy, no matter what you celebrate around the winter solstice. However, uh, I, you know, we celebrate Christmas here at my house. I, I'm in the Christmas spirit. I'm in that Christmas mood. I just have this need, I, the need to talk a Christmas topic, you know, just because I have that joy in my heart. I have that spirit in my soul and I really need to appeal to the algorithm. So here we go. And we're going to talk about Transformers celebrating Christmas. And when I first researched this topic, I was actually kind of surprised because you would think that a, a franchise all about selling toys would be all about Christmas, right? Apparently not. Apparently that's not the case uh, because uh, I really, I was surprised at how little I found in animation. Now, there's a lot of mentions of Christmas, but there are no Christmas-centric stories in Transformers animation. The closest we got was the episodes of Transformers Animated, where we got to see a storyline that took place on Christmas, but Christmas really only played the part of getting the plot kicked off. Everything after that, you know, there's there's drapings of Christmas, but the story and the plot itself is not about Christmas, so I don't really consider it any kind of Christmas special. Kind of like Die Hard. And now that I've started a flame war in the comments, let's go on to where Transformers really did celebrate Christmas, and that was in the comic books. But not the American Marvel comics. Transformers only had Christmas specials in the UK version. You would think it would be the US that was cramming Christmas down everyone's throats in Transformer media. Nope doing it over in England. So, I wanted to go over some of the weirder ones. Well, well, I wanted to go over most of them, frankly, because uh, all of them have their own brand of weird. Because no matter what, you're trying to get alien robots to celebrate a religious holiday on Earth. And even if you take the religion out and just make it about joy and sharing and happiness, family and giving and all that, it's still a little weird, weird right? We're going to take time out from our war to have this. And now there are historic parallels, you know, famously, you know, you know, we, you know, you know, there have been battles in uh, certain war times where the, the competing army stopped for 24 hours, you know, and they actually like celebrated Christmas together and then they went their own ways and tried to kill each other again because Christmas is that special. So I guess that's what they're going for here. <laughs> but so, we're going to go over some of the ones from the Marvel UK run. Uh, the first one being a little bit weird because they're decorating and they're setting up for Christmas and all this. Um, but again, it's just taking place around Christmas and Christmas is only going to play one element of the plot. The The takeaways here are, you know, seeing, uh, seeing Huffer and Braun building a Christmas tree for starters and Optimus Prime just stoically standing around in a weird Santa costume with a hood. Um, you don't normally see Santa with a hood. Um, the hoodie's not as popular in the 80s as they are now. Uh, this is a... I think what's weird about this panel is that he's just so stoic. He's just standing there. He's not speaking. He's just kind of staring at what's going on. And that's basically all he does in the story. What's bothersome to me about the story is that it's really not about Christmas per se. It's really not about any of the Transformers. It's about Circuit Breaker. And Jazz just happens to be caught up in the plot. I hate Circuit Breaker. <laughs> I know she's a more villainous character. She's supposed to be like a human level threat for Transformers. Um, but I don't know. Frankly, uh, she lays it on so thick. Uh, she comes all across as vaguely racist. I mean, okay, villain, fine. 
but she's not patterned after a villain. They kind of designed her to be like a superhero that's trying to stop the Transformers from warring on Earth. So it's kind of a neutral faction. So you're kind of, and there's her origins kind of have some tragedy to it. They're trying way too hard. And then they just make her this most unlikable character, even, even as a villain. Even if you view, view her as a villain, she is incredibly unlikable. Uh, yeah, I, I hate I hate Circuit Breaker. Hate, all right, so wasn't a fan of that one when I discovered it. Uh, the next one to look at, uh, this one was a little bit odd. So the beginning of the story is... Optimus Prime recovers a small piece of the creation matrix, which is a little bit different than the matrix of leadership that we had in animation. This is basically kind of like Vector Prime or Vector Sigma combined with the matrix. And he got a little piece of it and he was in a position where he could revive a dead Autobot because Autobots died a lot in the, in the Marvel comic book run. He's having a moral dilemma because he doesn't know who to revive. You know, he, you know, does he revive first aid in order to have, uh, you know, another medic available? Do you revive Prowl to have a field commander? Do you revive a Dinobot for strength? Uh, do you just randomly pick and like his conscience wouldn't allow him to even, you know, uh, go with that. So he's in turmoil over the whole time until he gets a, he gets an awakening. He gets a rude awakening about how much damage that they have done to the planet Earth, their adopted home. So he uses the piece to basically seed the planet and try to restore some of the damage that they have done. Which, okay, a noble little thing. Um, could have brought someone back to life and sold a few more toys, but this is the UK run. They couldn't really do anything like massively significant in the plot because they had to work their stories in between the Marvel comic books. The UK books ran much quicker uh, than the Marvel ones that came out monthly, so... Uh, they had to fill in a lot of space. Then they come up, they came up with some really weird stories as a result, like this one. So this is the one where you famously get that shot of Starscream uh, waving, waving to a kid, saying "Ah, oh, Merry Christmas, kid." Uh, probably, probably gonna show up on your Twitter feed here in a few days as of this recording. Uh, the actual plot of it is, for some reason. Uh, this human is not scared of Starscream, and Starscream, for whatever reason, isn't just blasting him. Uh, he actually lets the human ramble on about it's Christmas time, you know, it's, you know, so what is Starscream's answer. So it was trying, it was him trying to, like, show Starscream the holiday and the Christmas spirit, etc., etc. You know, joy of giving and all that. So Starscream was going to attempt... It was for whatever reason he was playing along with this right down to like transforming and letting the guy fly around inside to show him you know so we can show Starscream you know the decorations and all this they come across a bus that's stuck in the snow so he he eggs on Starscream to actually like rescue this bus and get it back on the road uh streetwise ends up spotting this fight ensues uh miss you know of course uh misunderstandings all around but Starscream actually does do it. He actually does, like, stop the fight long enough to take up, pick up the bus, put it back on the road, get everyone going. Uh, streetwise, confused, escorts them off. Uh, and Starscream learned absolutely nothing. Of course, Starscream absolutely learned nothing. But at the very least, learned enough to where he did give an honest Merry Christmas at the end. Uh, it's weird <laughs> it's, it's, there's a, there's a lot of contrivance to making it work because any other starscream story he just would have shot the kid <laughs> uh so that that was another one and that's where we get that famous image it's going to float around for you know the next few days uh we have another one starring uh jetfire who in the marvel comics was created on earth and the story here revolved around how he was more he was actually more comfortable and felt more need to help humans than he was his fellow Autobots because he was more connected to Earth and the Earthlings. Um, it's more not so much about Christmas. This is, again, a story that takes place at Christmas time. And it's more about uh, Jetfire just basically becoming comfortable with who he is and accepting that, yeah, you're the first of a new type of Transformer. Embrace it. 
You know, don't question it and don't get worried about, you know, you're going to choose Autobot or human if the, if the choice comes down to it. And of course, it never did because this is the UK run. Uh, the story cannot interfere too much. Uh, but it's definitely an interesting little character take to show Jetfire going through some turmoil over his unique origins in the comic books. And again, it's barely about Christmas. It just happens to be around that time of year. And then there's this one. So this is the cover of issue 302 of the Transformer UK series. And it does feature an Ebenezer Scrooge style uh, shot of Dreadwind and three... Uh, well, we don't know. Uh, it looks It's a very twisted version of Grimlock and Blaster. And then a mysterious hooded figure that is apparently a twisted version of Dreadwind. And they, go through, and they go through this because Dreadwind was getting replaced in the letter section at the end of the book. So this was basically him just uh, lear learning to accept the fact that he was getting replaced. So he, basically, instead of like becoming giving and celebratory and all that, no, he just wants to get revenge on his creators and just walks off and just like quits his job so the new guy can come in. Uh the problem is you're seeing the cover because this was just a text story. There was no art. There was no comic for it. For whatever reason, it's the front cover of the comic, but it has no pages. It's just like a blurb at the end, which is really, really bizarre. Like to make it the front, but have absolutely nothing in there. The comic book itself is just fluff more than anything. Uh, but... Uh, there's not the only source of Transformer comic books we have. IDW also did a holiday special during their run of the Transformer books, at least during the first run. Um, this was after Dark Cybertron, Starscream was in charge, and there were three stories here, and I like all three stories. Okay, this is the era of IDW storytelling I actually really like. I, I mean, it, it, they felt like they were having fun, but also they could tell some serious stories at the same time. In this one, Starscream is basically taking on the Grinch's role, where everyone is celebrating, everyone is happy, and, you know, like, enjoy, enjoying this holiday that Starscream has contrived that is very Christmas-like. But he is the only one that's not getting anything out of it. He wanted praise and adulation over this. He got nothing. Uh, everyone was just enjoying time and uh, togetherness with each other. No one went to visit him until the end where they decided to give Starscream the gift of friendship for one night. And apparently, and what I love about this is they actually went full on Seuss and the whole thing rhymes. The entire story rhymes and it's delightful that way. So that one is good. Uh, the next one is better. So this is the crew of the Lost Light. They are going to be entering a dangerous area of space. And in order to pass through it without getting attacked or destroyed, they have to set up a bunch of uh, stealth equipment. Uh, they have to set up a whole bunch of things to protect their own, uh, you know, their, their mental processes and their life signs and all that. So, <laughs> apparently this kicks off with Brainstorm inventing something called a contrivance engine. Uh, and contrivance is what you do in a storyline that makes no sense. It's just forced in there. It exists just to make the plot go forward, just to kick off the story itself. Uh, so, yes, uh, they, they created a whole thing just to explain why everything was coming up Christmassy. <laughs> right down to the UK traditions of Christmas with the paper hats and the Christmas crackers. Like, they didn't miss a beat here. So... It's a it's an amusing story, and there's there's actually some like genuinely heartfelt stuff in there too that I actually kind of like. And then there's this, <laughs> the last story of that particular comic book is, uh, Thundercracker, writing a horrible Christmas story where he gets into a fist fight with Santa Claus. Before realizing, oh no, this is Megatron getting revenge on Santa for getting coal for Christmas. Again, the whole theme of Thundercracker in later IDW was he loved Earth culture. He loved Earth storytelling on TV and movies. 
he wanted to do it himself, but he was terrible at it because he didn't understand writing and he didn't understand Earthlings. He gets better, but this is still at a stage where he's really, really awful and intentionally so, which makes this delightful to read. There is something I really, really love IDW Thundercracker in this phase where he's left the Decepticons and he's just doing his own weird uh, Earth appreciation writing thing. He's incredibly charming and endearing uh, because he's just, it brings about a weird innocence to him because he has the realization that he, that Earth culture changes and grows so much so fast, even with their short lifespans compared to theirs. But uh, their race has lived millions of years and has never changed. He's fascinated by that. He finds beauty in that. And it's a throwback to Thundercracker's original G1 bio. This is the first time I've seen G1 uh, Thundercracker's original characterization actually utilized and utilized well. And this just kind of personifies just peak trying to fit in Thundercracker. Uh, so I think that's an appropriate place to end. We started with Optimus dressed as Santa. We end with Megatron dressed as Santa. Surprisingly, not a whole lot of Christmas representation in Transformers, despite being a more uh, just a tool to sell toys. But that's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, I do think what we got is at least interesting because the UK run is so weird. And what we got in the US is actually very light, upbeat fun, which is what any good holiday special should be, which is why I don't include Die Hard. <laughs> So I can't wait to read your angry reactions. So leave them in the comments below and uh, whatever you celebrate on uh, the winter solstice, happy holidays. I hope everyone has had a good December. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.